Hey everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in today. I am excited about this video. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You can make four variations of the same three pumpkins with a zentangle-ish pattern in each of them. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, I've kind of designed them to be a smaller size, four by six. Um, that way you can use them as a card or a gift. Um, you can still frame them and hang them on the wall. I think they'll be really fun. And um, I know, you know, we all like to get mail and it is getting to be the holiday season and pumpkins are very festive this time of the year. So they would make great um, gifts and cards and letters to send in the mail to people that, you know, we're not able to see right now. So that was my concept for this one. Hope you enjoy it. Wanted to talk a little bit about the supplies I used. Um, as always, use whatever you have. You don't have to buy anything special. Um, but if you're ready to invest a little bit, um, I wanted to let you know what I use. So um, I have a mechanical pencil. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll put it against the wall. Um, it, you know, it buy these anywhere. Um, I do like it um, because I don't have to sharpen it so much. You just kind of keep using the lead around in a circle and you'll push a little button and more comes out. It's nice and easy. So I do use that. Um, I use, of course, um, my Micron pen. Um, Micron pen is archival ink. So, um, and the water, when you use watercolor, um, once it dries, the water doesn't affect it. It doesn't bleed or smear or run. So that's very nice to use. Um, in any water-based artwork that you make that you want a nice line that's not gonna move and stay. Um, in this video, I am introducing a pen called the Elegant, Elegant Writer. Um, again, these are available Walmart, Michaels, um, Target, probably CVS, Walgreens, those type of places. It is a calligraphy pen. Um, and it is very fun to use with water because it does bleed and it does run. Um, I'm also introducing this fun pen. It's a brush pen, watercolor brush pen. So it's got a watercolor tip and it's got water right inside of it. Um, it's nice to travel with and it's a lot of fun to use and play with. So there's that. The paper that I'm using today is uh, mixed media Canson mixed media paper it's 90 pound this one happens to be rough paper again this is available pretty much anywhere that you would do your shopping that um, has supplies walmart target michaels um, any kind of heavy paper works because we're going to be putting a lot of layers on the paper um, a lot of ink a lot of water so the heavier the paper will stand up better again if you don't have it do what you have use what you've got um, creativity need not be limited by supplies available. <laughs> so, um, I also use my Prismacolor colored pencils for one of these and my little um, travel set of watercolors. So those are the supplies for this week. Um, I'll try and get better about uh, posting what supplies I use and um, where I get them so that you have an idea of how I'm actually making this if you ever have any questions about supplies or process if i'm not clear enough please let me know uh, i want to make sure that you know you guys can actually do these and have fun when you're following along so with all of that said uh, i think we should jump right into the three pumpkins um, i'm going to um, post the reference photo in the comments um, of the video i haven't I'll try and get it in the description. I'm not sure I've quite figured that all out yet, but we'll see um, what I can get done. So um, if for whatever reason you don't see it, you can't find it, um, message me and I will send you the reference photo for this one. So hope you guys have fun. Um, at the end, please remember when you're done and you post your images, your paintings, your um, beautiful pieces to hashtag may you create so that everybody can see them. Thanks guys. So I've gone ahead and drawn my pumpkins because the goal of this um, drawing really isn't the shape of the pumpkins. I do have 
um, my reference photo in the comments below so you can open that up or you can draw your own pumpkins if you have pumpkins available to look at and draw the shape that they are. Um, one, two, three, however many you want. For this uh, drawing, we're gonna do the three pumpkins um, and work on three patterns. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, get drawing them. When you do a drawing of multiple objects, I recommend starting with the middle object or at least putting a holder there so that you know how big to make them. Uh, and I, just from experience, if you start on the side, this one can be huge and then the other ones, there's not enough room, they go off the paper. So um, I either start with the middle object or I put some type of marker there that this is about the size of that center object and then I can place the other one so that everything fits. That's um, just a little <laughs> recommendation after um, some experience not doing that correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start on the patterns of these. We're gonna start with the middle one. We're gonna do, it's called um, a Huggins, <laughs> Huggins pattern and it is a form of a basket weave. I will show you over here on the side. Um, it's a neat shape. It's kind of an hourglass shape um, and they these pieces hug and that's why it's called Huggins. So goes like this and then the one underneath it's gonna go like this and then the one over here is gonna go like this. Um, so once you get a, once you get the hang of this pattern, it is a pretty simple a pattern. Um, you do have to check yourself regularly on it. So we're going to start with this pattern on the center pumpkin. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put our lines down the pumpkin for its uh, ribs. I'll just throw a couple of these in. We don't need too many. Um, the more we have, the more uh, basket weave we're gonna have. So if you want less, you can put less of these in. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around here and I'm gonna make some horizontal rings around the pumpkin so that we have a place to put our basket weave pattern, our Huggins pattern. Um, if you go to a website called zentangles.com, they have a lot of um, patterns um, with the names, which is kind of fun to check out if you're interested. Okay, so now from here, I'm gonna pick a center one and I'm gonna start. Uh, I'll try and keep my hand out of the way so you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and make my first Huggins. So the Huggins, if they go wide around at the end, then it comes in towards the center. So that's how your shape's made. It's kind of a bow tie shape. So once you've got that, if it goes out here, then this edge is gonna come in. So you can go ahead and do all the way up and down so these went back out. Of course, I'm following the lines of the pumpkin to help. So this is gonna come in. And then this one's gonna go out. And then this one comes in. And this one goes out. So now we're gonna move over to this line. So this one is out, pushes out, which means that the one next to it is going to push in. It is the opposite of the shape. So this one went out. Well, it goes in on this side, but it's to the inside of our vertical line. It's an outside line on our vertical line. So this is an outside line on this vertical line. So that's all you have to remember. If you want to, you can go ahead and come in here and finish these shapes. It may help you see what you're doing so that you know that this one's gonna go up, and that one's gonna come down, that one is gonna go up, this one's gonna come down. But I do it usually uh, along the vertical lines, and I do the opposite of what this one is. This one goes out, or the same, so that it makes my pattern. This one goes out, 
This one comes in, so this one's coming in. This one goes out, so this one's gonna go out. This one comes in, so this one's gonna come in. And then again, over here on this line, this one came, it, this is an actual out for this side, so that's an out. This is an in, so this is an in. Out and in and out and there we go, out and in. And then this is gonna be an out. It will take you a while to get the hang of this. Don't be upset if you erase a lot. It took me quite a while to kind of get the hang of it and to be able to see it. So I just put those there because that does our line. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put these in so I can see. So that one goes that way, that way. This one's gonna come down. This one's gonna go in, up, in, that way. So this one is this way. There you go. And you can start to see how this makes a little bit of a basket weave pattern that, you know, maybe this one is on top. So these are gonna kinda come out. You can even start to shade them a little bit if you wanna be able to see it where they're gonna meet each other so that you can kinda see it. This one's gonna be going under these so it's a little darker here. And just kind of a fun pattern. So we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna come up here. This is an in, so this is an in and out. And in and out. And I just every once in a while check to make sure that I am correct. Because like I said, it's not hard to kind of get off. And I like to go ahead and put these in because I like I said, I you, you I do still get confused. So go ahead each one, row and put these in so that you know what you're doing. So again, this one is gonna be the opposite going that way. These are rounded out. And some of these, as it curves around the pumpkin, they're going to be harder to tell. Don't worry about that. It's gonna look correct when the pumpkin is finished. Some of these are cooperating quite nicely and just following our lines, that's kind of helpful. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a couple extra little lines back over here, because that would continue. One would go this way. So that is our first pattern, our first pumpkin pattern, and it's called a Huggins. These other, um, this next pattern, I don't really have a name for it. Um, and I'm gonna try and do it so that you guys can see it. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, what we're doing is we're really just accentuating the ribs of this one and making a fun pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these in. Now, I'm not doing as many on this one and you'll see why in a second. We want some room to play with. So. For this one, pick your side that you're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna come right in here and I'm gonna add a line that's close to this one. So then on the inside, I'm gonna add a line that's close to this one. I'm gonna add a line that's close to this side so that I'm on the same side each time so that I know I'm not adding too many lines. Add one there. So for this one, um, we're trying to make it look like these um, parts of the pumpkin actually come out towards us and that these ribs go back away from us. So we're gonna do an arched line going up. I'm gonna go up. And 
and it starts to make it look like it's coming towards us. And I'm not measuring this, I'm not doing any, I'm just freehanding it in there. Uh, we've talked about before, our eyes will help even it out, the viewer's eyes, and help make it um, a little bit more even um, because they're, I mean, if you want to measure it, by all means, go ahead. Um, I just find that uh, takes some of the fun out of the drawing for me. So now in these ridges, it's gonna be a little bit harder because they're so small, but we're gonna actually draw the arch going the opposite direction. We're gonna curve it up. Hope you can see that in the video. You'll be able to see it better when we highlight it with the micron pen. Let me cover it. So these are gonna curve up and that makes it look like it goes down into the pumpkin. And then again, the same thing, we're gonna go up on this side. And I am connecting them And again, in the rib, we're gonna make our arches this way. A Little bit of an optical illusion. Might see another one coming out there. We're gonna go ahead and just do teeny ones right there. And then right here, I'm gonna start to bring them back out. It's gonna be a tight squeeze in there. But because it goes around the edge of the pumpkin, we are gonna want something out there. Okay, so now for this side. Okay, so that one is pretty good. For our last pumpkin, we're gonna do a bamboo pattern on it. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw some ribs. Since we've got some of our pumpkin's ribs in there, we're gonna go ahead and make two lines and then come down and we'll make two more lines and then two more lines. And then on this one, we're gonna alternate where they are because bamboo ribs aren't in the same place. So we're gonna keep going like that. Then this one was here, we'll go this way. And I'm curving them so that they look like they're on a pumpkin that has some form to it. So we'll put another one down here because maybe there'd be another one right there. This one's gonna be here. This one will be right about here and here. We're gonna go do this one. This one's gonna be in here and then we'll have one more up here. So, and then, you know, bamboo underneath the ribs, there'll be a little bit of shading in there, which again, we can do a little bit more with the pen. Up here. Okay. So there's our bamboo pumpkin. How much fun is it to have a pumpkin made out of bamboo? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and get out my Micron pen. This is an eight, and I'm going to trace my pumpkins and then come back in and we'll clean up the paper. 
um, and we can talk about some more shading. Okay, at this point in time, we've got it all traced and um, we can start to add some of the fun details. So um, because I wanna show you um, several different ways to do it, I'm gonna show you one of the tricks that I use sometimes when I am um, working on a design or trying to figure something out. I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of this on my iPad. Get as much of it in there as straight as we can. Okay, and then I'm going to go to an app called Snapseed. This is one of the apps that I use um, regularly. Open from device, all photos. I'm gonna open my pumpkins. So now I have my pumpkins on my iPad um, and I am going to go to the edit tool and I want to convert this to a black and white and we wanna go with bright because that gets away some, um, a lot of the background. You can see there's normal. It's got a lot of the shading in it from taking a photograph. So if we go to bright, that lightens a lot of it up and you can adjust it you can adjust the brightness so that gets rid of a little bit more and then you can up the contrast so then it we're starting to lose the um, paper texture on it but oh, let's keep going with that there we go most of the paper texture is gone but we still have a quite a bit of our um, velvety blacks in there from the micron pen so we're gonna tell it okay um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save a copy. It'll ask, and there we go, okay. So I'm going to, a lot of the times what I do is then I will put a nice piece of drawing paper in the printer. I don't know about you guys, I don't have a very good printer. I have a, a regular plain old inkjet, um, you know, prints mostly black and white, uh, not very good color, but I'll take a nice piece of drawing paper and I will cut it to the eight and a half by 11, and I will print a couple of the photos that I just edited in my Snapseed app, and that way I have them on nice paper, um, and I can um, experiment with color and with some other techniques without um, affecting my actual physical drawing. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'll be right back and we can um, look at some fun ways to affect this drawing. Okay, so my uh, the program on my um, computer allowed me to print two small ones on a piece of drawing paper. I did have to cut it down to um, eight and a half by 11, my printer won't accept anything bigger. So um, I ended up with four. I kind of like this size. I think this will be nice. I, you know, you can 
do a couple of different things and practice and play and have fun. Um, and then write a note on the backside and give them as a gift or um, frame them, whatever you wanna do with them. So these ones happen to be each four by six. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I didn't put my paper in the printer the right way. This is the textured side and this is the smooth side. So I have one of each, which will be fun to play with. Um, I'm using, let's see if I can show you the front of this sketchbook quick. I am using a mixed media, um, oh, I'm sorry, mixed media um, paper. Um, you can get this at Michael's. I believe you can get it at Walmart. I'm sure Target sells it. It's, um, it's, a, it's a 90 pound um, mixed media paper. It holds a lot of pigment. It holds a lot of pencil. Um, it is heavier than your um, computer paper. And when you're um, gonna mess around with color or a lot of layers, it's nicer to have a heavier piece of paper. So uh, without further ado, <laughs> I say that all the time, I need to stop. Let's get on to um, adding some color on this. <clears throat> okay, I have got my um, pumpkin, my paper right here. There's both of them. I set on the back of a book because um, I have a two by four work table, which is, I love it, um, but it's not very helpful if we're trying to draw some fine lines. So get this centered back up um, and we'll go ahead and talk about um, some different ways to affect this drawing. Um, originally, in the drawing, I had a line to mark where the ground and the background was. So on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. It doesn't have to be straight. We're not saying what they're sitting on, but it is nice if it's kinda even. So we'll just go ahead and put that in there just a little bit so that they're actually sitting somewhere. In the reference photo um, that's in the comments, um, they're kind of backlit. It was, um, you know, they're sitting in front of our grill outside waiting for us to carve them. Uh, so they, their shadows are mostly in the front of them and there's some a little bit of light on the um, right sides of them, a little on this one on the left, but most of the shadows are really kind of right in the middle of them. So um, um, we can do that. I'm gonna darken this line because it's awful light on here. So we're just gonna darken that up. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in um, some more detail and then some um, shadows to, to make them look a little bit more re realistic. So you can do this in um, with your Micron pen um, is a really nice way to do it. So if you, uh, on the Huggins basket weave, if you decide which one's on top, it looks to me like this one's on top. So if that's true, if that's going over um, this piece, then it's gonna be darker right here as it goes in and under this piece. So we're gonna go ahead and just Add just a little bit around the outside edge of that just to darken that up okay and then this one goes under this piece so it'll be darker up here and just add in just a little bit of texture to it to help it look a little bit more like a basket weave and again this will be darker as it goes in and in this one will go in there under that piece under that piece. Let's see. This is going to go in here, so it'll be. So we're just going to come around this one and give it just a little bit more interest on these.
Okay. All right. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the shadows in the um, front of this pumpkin. And I know it seems very counterintuitive to do this, but I do love a um, straight black and white image. So I'm going to just go ahead and put my shadow in. Um, if I mark where the shadow is, I'll see that the shadow is pretty much just kind of follows around this line here. So I'm going to make it the darkest right in this area. So I'm just going to come in and start putting this in. Because the pumpkin's round, the shadow is going to be the darkest right here in the center. Spend a little bit more time making the shadow dark right in this area. I'm doing my lines, um, touching the paper lightly and I'm lifting off the paper lightly so that um, you don't see a lot of beginning and ending lines. Just a little bit darker up in here. This is where it's nice to have a heavier piece of paper. It can take this kind of um, black marker coming back over it several times. And you can see, you can still see the basket weave shading that we put underneath it. It does start to blend in with the shadow, which is what it would do if it was a real basket sitting outside. So now we can ease up on our shading as we get over. It'll be still be pretty dark towards the bottom, but as we get over to the side, it's going to be a little bit lighter, so we don't have to put as much in there. Go back in and darken up the bottom. Not much light gets to the bottom of the pumpkin because it's rounded again. Okay, so there is our first pumpkin. Um, on this pumpkin that we did our ribs on, um, it's going to be darker where the pumpkin curves inwards. So I'm going to lightly, let's see if I can do this without blocking the camera. I'm going to lightly come in and add just a few nice light lines down in here to darken that just a little bit to help it set back in space. I'm going to do that to all of these ribs. It just sets them back in a little bit. Hardly touching the paper, so I'm not getting a lot of very black lines. Just a little shading in there. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and do the same with this pumpkin. This pumpkin had a little bit more light hitting it from the left, but most of it came from the right. So we're going to put the shadow for this one right in here. Start down at the bottom. It's very lightly on the edge as it starts, the pumpkin starts to turn towards us, and we can darken in this area because it is getting the least amount of light. And the bottom as well is getting very little light.
there's that pumpkin. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna this do this one. Now this one is gonna be a little darker around here because I was sitting so close to this pumpkin, but it is also the f furthest on the edge and if our light source is coming in from the top right, it's going to have the most light. So we're gonna just go ahead and give it a little right in here. So same thing. Still gonna be the darkest right here where the roundness of the pumpkin is facing us. And again at the bottom. So there's the shadow on that one. And then, of course, they're going to have some shadows in front of them where they sit on the ground. So for those, I'm just going to go ahead. They're going to be a little bit pumpkin shaped. They'll be a little round. They'll be darkest where the where they meet the pumpkin. So we can make this shadow come out a little further because he's so tall. And then this shadow, again, the lights come in here. There will not be as much of a shadow for this pumpkin. But he's tall, so we'll give him a little bit out here. So there you go. There is a black and white, solely strictly black and white version of our pattern pumpkin. From here, if you wanted to, you could add some color into this one, or you could merely sign it, always sign your work. Like I said, cut out your four by six. It would be adorable hanging on the wall. It would make a wonderful card to mail home to your mother, <laughs> mail it to your sister, your best friend. This needs to be a little darker in here as I'm looking at it. So I'm just gonna add a few more lines very quickly. We all love to get things in the mail. This would be such a fun thing to mail. Okay, so there's that one. For the next one, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to talk to you about this pen. Um, I have put it in the comments below. Let's see, I uh, can't really read it. It's got an elegant writer. You can get these also, I believe, at Target, Walmart, Michaels. Um, and I've had them for a long time. It is, um, um, where's my, there we go. It is a calligraphy uh, tipped pen. So, let's flip this over a little bit, meaning that when you make a line, there, it's for, and I've had them for calligraphy. Um, and use them in the past for that. Um, but I have just learned, thanks to a wonderful artist um, named Claudine, that they are great for a few other things. So I'm gonna go ahead, if you have one of these, um, this will be a really fun thing for you to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit down here. I'm gonna put a little bit in around here. Just a 
just a little. I'm probably doing way too much. I'm still learning how to use this. It's a great tool to add to your toolbox. I'll put that in here. Okay. Um, and then along with that, I have this. It is a um, paint pen paintbrush pen. It's full of water. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it, there is just clear water in there. And so then you can come in, get the ink from the Elegant Writer pen wet, and you can spread it out and it becomes your shadow. Let's keep It's a neat blue purpley color. It's very fun. Not sure it's great for pumpkins at Halloween, but it's a ton of fun. And then this bit down here will bleed in and we can pull some this way and it can be our shadow. Pretty neat. So I'm gonna do the same with this. I'm gonna pull this up. This one we'll do a little bit more work on in a minute. We'll work on the shadow here for this one. Okay, and we'll work on the shadow for this one as well. Okay, that's just kind of fun. Let it get all over. This, we're gonna go ahead and pull it right up here into these veins, ribs. Um, see if we can get some more over here a little bit. And pick up some more for here. Okay. And then again, we can go ahead and add some in for the shadow. really kind of a fun way to get a little bit of color on here. Now the other thing I wanted to show you with this Elegant Writer pen that's kind of fun is you can actually um, get some on your brush and then you can, well that was way too much. Let's blot some of that off. And then you can use it to put it just where you want it. Let's see if we can get some more of that. If you can see me doing this, we can put some just where we want it in here. And you can come back and pull some of it up. Um, I don't have a cloth next to me right now, but you can blot it on a cloth. Get a little more. Put it in there. It's movable for a while. Um, I think anytime it gets wet, it would probably move again. I have not um, tried that out yet. That Let's keep adding it back in there. Okay, so something like that. Cover a little bit more of this so that it looks like the shadow. And bleed some of it in, we don't want too much. So this um, brush pen, if I squeeze it, more water comes out or you can dry it. Go ahead and get a little up here. Just add a very little bit up around in here. Um, get some off on my blotter paper over there. Just add a little bit in. You can actually pull some of that in from here for this side of the pumpkin. Okay, that's just kind of fun. So I definitely recommend getting 
um, an elegant writer pen and a water paintbrush. Um, the next time you're out and about at any one of your favorite stores, I bet CVS, Walgreens, uh, I'm pretty sure I would check them all. Um, these are pretty common tools um, as of late. So there is that one that would be also, I know your mother would love this one too. So you could easily write Happy Halloween on this one and send that to her. She would love it. Send it to um, friends that you just haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, I haven't seen quite a few friends in a while, so sign it. So we can get that all in there. Ta-da. All right, those are the two I really wanted to share with you. I think they're just a lot of fun. Um, it's amazing what you can do with just a pen, just your, your Micron pen or um, any felt tip pen and white paper. It, it, it's, it is counterintuitive to take your pen and just draw lines. Um, on something, but as you can see, you can still see the patterns that you put in there. The contrast is wonderful. The dark um, ink is nice and velvety. It's very attractive to the eye. So that is the two that I really wanted to share with you this week, uh, the two techniques. I am going to go ahead real quick and I'm going to do uh, a little on these. We'll do maybe a watercolor on one and a colored pencil on the other. So um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the camera to get those done, and um, I'll be back after that.